we're going to talk about the array list and the introduction says when we work with arrays in java we've been limited by the fact that once an array is created it has a fixed size we cannot add or remove elements but what if we need to add to the book lists news feeds and other structures we were using arrays to represent so what if we want to add to those lists to represent dynamic lists, we can use Java's arrays list. Array lists allow us to store elements of the same type, just like arrays, access elements by index, just like we've seen in arrays, add elements and remove elements. So these are our array lists. Remember how we had to import java.util.arrays in order to use additional array methods? Well, to use an array list at all, we need to import them from Java's util package as well. So we need to add this line of code at the very top of our, um, of our file. Let's learn how to make use of this powerful object. Now, if we have a look at the instructions, it says in the file shopping.java, we've defined two arrays, grocery items, a string array, and prices, a double array. We've tried to add a new item to the end of each. And it tells us to run the code and see whether it's going to work. And as you can see in the output, we're getting an error and it says array index out of bound exception we're gonna understand in the next videos what this means but meanwhile let's have a quick look at our uh, code here so we have the shopping.java file and we have a class called shopping and we see the main method and inside the main method we have an array that stores well we have a variable that stores an array of strings it stores this one, this one, and this one. So these are three elements. This element is going to be at index 0, this element is going to be at index 1, and this one is going to be at index 2. Okay, so index 1, index 0, index 1, index 2. Okay, next on line 8, we have a variable that stores an array of double. We have these elements, so 25. 2.95 and 2.50 okay these are the elements again the, this first element is going to be at index 0 this element is going to be at index 1 and this element is going to be at index 2 now we see a comment that says we're adding ham to the groceries so to the grocery items variable we are trying to add at index 3 the value of ham but can we do this? We know already that arrays, as we've seen them, as we have seen them in the previous lesson, arrays has have a fixed value, meaning that whenever we create them, whatever a number of elements we've allocated, those are the ones we can't we cannot change the number of elements that an array has. In this case, we have index zero, index one, index two. But on line 11, we're trying to add to index 3 value of ham. We don't have index 3. And it's not possible to change the number of elements that an array stores. And the same um, thing we notice on line 12. So in the variable prices, which is this one, which is an array of doubles, we're trying to add at index 3, which does not exist. We're trying to add the value 499. And therefore, we are getting an error simply because we cannot extend the number or we cannot increase the number of elements that we have already defined this array to have. Okay. And this is where array lists come into play. Essentially, array lists will allow us to add elements and remove elements on top of the functionality that arrays on their own give us. Now, let's move on to the next lesson. 
and we are going to see how to create an array list. Okay, so to create an array list, we need to declare the type of objects it will hold, just as we do with arrays. In this case, what we need to do is we need to create the name of the variable, which in this example is baby names, and then we have to add the type of the values that we're going to store in this variable, and in this case it's going to be a string, and you notice these um, uh, greater than and smaller than signs, which need to contain the type of the values that we're going to store in this array list. And then in front of this, we have to put array list. So this way Java will know that this variable is an array list, array list because we have this, this keyword here, array list. And then in these angle uh, brackets, we're going to see the type of the variables or the type of the elements that we're going to store in this variable. We use angle brackets, so smaller than and greater than, to declare the type of the array list. These symbols are used for generics. Generics are a Java construct that allows us to define classes and objects as parameters of an array list. For this reason, we cannot use primitive types in an array list. Okay, so we cannot use primitive types in an array list. This code won't compile because we're saying let's create this variable called ages and it's going to be an array list of ints. Well, int, as we remember from the previous lessons, int is a primitive data type. Therefore, the definition of an array list is that it cannot use primitive data types. It cannot store elements of primitive data type. In our case, that's why this code will not compile. However, this code will compile. So, for example, if we're trying to create a variable called ages, and we know it's going to be an array list, but instead of int, so if we indeed want to store elements of type integer inside of our array list, we have to use this keyword, so integer. This is a wrapper class, and we're going to find uh, more about this wrapper class and what this means in future videos. But for now, this is the class of type integer. Okay, so if we want to store uh, values or elements of type int, we have to use the wrapper class, which is noted like this integer. Okay, the integer generic has to be used in an array list instead. You can also use double. This is in the case if we want to use doubles and char for types you would normally declare as double because we've seen double before, but the uh, wrapper class of double would be double with capital D like this or chars, which we've seen again in the previous lessons, and its wrapper class for char is char like this with capital C. We can initialize an empty array list using the new keyword, and we've seen the new keyword in the previous lessons as well. So for example, if we want to declare an array list, the name of that variable is going to be ages in our case, and we know this is going to be an array list because it, it has the keyword array list in front of it. And then in angle brackets, we're going to have the wrapper class of integer. And then if we want to also initialize this variable, we have to say ages. And then we put the equal sign and we add the new keyword followed by array list of integer. And then at the end, we have to put these uh, parentheses as well. Declaring and initializing it in one line would look like this. So we have a variable that is an array list. Okay, so we have a variable that is an array list and it, the uh, elements that this array list is going to store is going to be of type string. And then we use the new keyword and we say array list. And then we put again in angle brackets, we put the string, so the data type of the elements that we're going to store in this variable. And then we follow it by these parentheses. Now, if we have a look at the instructions, it says import array list 
package from java.util. Okay. We need to go in our code and we say java util dot well let's see java no we have to use import java dot util dot array list okay so this way we have imported the package that already exists in java the package called array list okay Okay, so let's try and run this. We've completed instruction number one. And then if we have a look at the instruction number two, it says create a new array list that will contain string elements and call it to do list. Okay, so we have to create a variable that is called to do list. Okay, and if we know that this is going to be an array list, we have to put the array list in front of it and then in angle brackets we have to say string because it's going to contain string elements okay so we've created this new array list that is called to do list and the type of the element that is going to store is going to be string at this point we have only declared this variable okay so let's run this as well Okay, let's have a look what might be the problem to do list. Let's create a new array list that will contain string elements and call it to do list. Well, of course, we have to do like we've seen in here. New array list. And we put an angle back brackets string and then we end it with a um, parentheses and the semicolon let's run it again and there you have it so this is how we create a new array list so it says to create it it was um it was my uh, my mistake because i only uh, i only thought we have to declare it but it says to create so i guess by create they mean to declare and initialize it okay let's move on to the next lesson Okay, we're going to see how to add an item to an array list. Okay, now we have an empty array list, but how do we get it to store values? Array list comes with an add method that takes an argument to add to the end of the array list. Okay, in our example here, we have a variable called Sudoku row one that is an array list and it's going to store elements of type integer. So we declare and um, create this uh, new variable, okay, by using the new keyword and then the array list. And in angle brackets, we put the uh, type of the elements that this um, variable is going to store. And of course, we end it with parentheses and the semicolon. And now on this variable, we can call the method dot add. Okay, so sudoku row one dot add. And then we're going to add as argument the value that we want to append or that we want to add inside this variable. Okay. So now if uh, once this, this line of code runs, we will know that sudoku row one, so this variable, holds element one element, which is four in our case. Okay. Now, if we say on the next line, sudoku row one, add eight. Okay. Now, if we were to run this to see the elements that we have in sudoku row one, now, this variable is going to hold values 4, which is the first one we added, and of course, value 8, because here we, wa we added value 4, and here we added value 8. Therefore, our variable now stores two elements of type integer, which are 4 and 8. Okay. On the next line, if we go and say sudoku row 1.add 3, 
So it says add this element, add this value to our array list, to our variable. Okay. In this case, if we were to see what are the elements that are contained in this variable, we would have the values for because we the value for we added it here. Then we add we added it the value eight, which is eight here. And then on the last line here, we added element three to this variable. Okay. So therefore our variable will have three elements four, eight and three. Okay. Now, if we have a look at the instructions, it says we've created an empty array, uh, an empty array list called to do list time to add some to do's below. We've initialized to do one. And it says initialize two new string variables to do two and to do three. Okay, so let's add some more to do um, variables here. Okay, so we have to say variable, regular variable in our case. So we have to do string to do two. And we're going to create another one that is called to do three. Okay. Set their values to any tasks you like. So we have to also add some values to them. In our case, let's say uh, cook. And then we're going to say study. Okay. So these are regular variables like we've seen them before in the, the previous lessons. I'm going to run this code now. Okay, now if we have a look at the instruction number two, it says use the dot add method to add to do one, to do two, and to do three to the to do list. Okay, so in our case, what we need to do here on line 13, we have already some comments and it says add to our to do list. So we need to go to do list. We have to call the method add okay so add and what we need to add to our to-do list well we need to add these variables so to do one and i'm going to copy this just to save some time and hopefully to avoid any spelling uh, any typing errors so what we're doing on line 14 15 and 16 is on our variable here we're adding these values to do one, which happens to be water plants. Then on line 15 on the to do list, we are adding by using the dot add method. We're adding this variable whose value is this. And then exactly the same on line 16 to our variable to do list. We are using the dot add method and we're passing it the argument to do three, which happens to be study. Now on line nine, 19, we have this system.out.println, the to-do list, which says print out on the screen, the elements that our variable holds. If I'm going to run this, we're going to get the output, water plants, cook and study. Why? Because these are the elements that we have added one by one to our to-do list array. Okay. We're going to move on to the next lesson and we're going to learn about array list size. Okay. Let's say we have an array list that stores items in a user's online shopping cart. As the user navigates through the site and adds item items, their cart grows bigger and bigger. If we want to display the number of items in the cart, we could find the size of using the well, we, we can find the, the, the number of the items that we have in the cart by using the size method. OK, so on any array list that we are creating, we can find out how many elements it has inside or how many elements is storing by using the method called size. OK, how do we know it's a method? Well, because it well, first of all, because it tells us this is a method and we can recognize it because it has these uh, parentheses here. 
Now, if we have a look at this example, we have a variable called shopping cart that is an array list, uh, an array list and stores values or elements of type string. So we're creating it on this line by using the new array list and then we put the type of the elements that this variable is going to store and we end it with um, parentheses and a semicolon. On the next line, on our variable, we're using the dot add method, which adds some element or some value to our shopping cart. So after this line, after we print, after we uh, run this code, and then we go to system dot out dot print ln shopping cart, and we access its size by invoking by calling this method on our variable. Okay. It says shopping cart dot size and it will print one. Why? Because we have one element stored in our uh, variable here in our array list. Then on the next line, if we do the same thing, we say shopping cart dot add and we add yet another element. Then if we get the size of the element, if we want to display display that size on the screen, we say shopping cart dot size and is going to uh, get printed um, two on the screen. Why? Because we have already this element and then that means we have one. And then by adding another one that makes two elements inside this shopping cart variable. And it means that by calling its size method, we're going to get back two because it has two elements inside. The same thing happens on this line. We're adding yet another element. And then if we are printing the size of this variable that stores these elements, of course, we're going to get three. Why? Because we have again, three elements, one, two, three. Okay. It says in dynamic objects like array lists, it's important to know how to access the amount of objects we have stored. In the instructions, it says detectives do a lot to solve a case, but who has more to do. Print out the size of each detective's to do array list. So we have a variable called Sherlock's to do's for Sherlock Holmes and Poirot to do's for Hercules Poirot. Okay, so what do we need to do here? Let's, um, let's run this code. Okay, print out the size of each detective's to-do list. Of course, we I didn't read this properly, so we have to print out the size of each detective's to-do list. Print out the size. Let's do this. So we have to say system dot out dot dot print ln, and inside here we have to get the uh, variable name. And then on this variable, we'll, we're going to call the size method. Okay. And then to do the same, and I've noticed I have a spelling um, error here, a typing error. Now on this one, on the on line 28, we have to use the second variable and it's going to, uh, we're going to get its size. Okay. I'm going to run this now. Okay, let's see what we make sure you have printed the size of each array list. Okay. Why are we still getting an error? Let's see. System. Well, of course I have again a, an error. All right, so we're getting five and six, five. So the first value comes from line 27 because we're adding one, two, three, four, five elements to Sherlock's to-do list. And then we have six um, printed on the screen as the result of line 28. And why is it six? Well, because we've added six elements to the, um, the other, um, detectives uh, list, which is Poirot to do's.
Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if we have a look at the instruction number two, it says, so who has more to do? Print the name of the detective whose to-do list is longer. Was it Sherlock or Poirot? All right, so print the name of the detective with the larger to-do list. So let's do it like so. And we would say, let's see, six, this was Poirot. Okay, we're gonna use a regular system dot dot print um, statement which we've seen before if we're gonna run this of course we get uh, Poirot because uh, this is the result of line 32 simply because we can tell between these two five and six we can tell which one is bigger therefore we can move on to the next lesson okay so we're gonna talk about accessing an index with arrays we can use bracket notation to access value to access a value at a particular index this is from the array uh, lesson we've seen previously so here we have an array variable that stores doubles okay and how we know it's an array well because it has the square brackets and these are the elements that is storing it has three elements this is at index 0, this is at index 1, this is at index 2. On the next line, if we want to print out the value of the element of this variable that is located at index 1, so if this is index 0, then this is index 1. The result of this line would be 2.5 because this is the element at index 1. So ratings at index 1 is 2.5. Okay, this code prints 2.5, the value at index 1 of the array, exactly what I've said before. Now, for array lists, bracket notation won't work. Instead, we use the method get to access an index. Okay, so if with arrays we can use the bracket notation, so these brackets to access the index, for array lists, we have to use the get method and then in here inside of the get method we have to pass it the index that we want to access okay if we have a look at the example that uh, they're giving us we have shopping cart so this is a variable and we know it's an array list that stores elements of type string and we're saying new array list shopping cart okay and well i think this is actually a, a bit of an error here because i think it should be here it should be a uh, string okay so in here in the the, the um, in the angle brackets we should put the type of data that this uh, this variable is storing okay and then if we say shopping cart dot add, we're adding this element to it. And then we're adding this element to it. And then we're adding this element to it. It has three elements, this being at index zero, this being at index one, and this being at index two. Okay. If on this line, we're trying to print out the um, value of the element at index 2 so this is index 0 this is index 1 this is index 2 the result of this line would be magnifying glass so it says this code prints magnifying glass which is the value at index 2 of the array list okay now if we have a look at the instructions it says use the get method to access the third to do element of the Sherlock's to do's and print the result. Okay, so we're gonna do Sherlock's to do list. So we have to use this one Sherlock's to do. And we have to print it out system dot out dot print ln. We have to get into this variable that stores the elements we have to use the dot notation to add to access the get method 
and inside it tells us to uh, print or to access the third element which is the third element well one two three this is the third element but we know that the third element will have the index of two because this has index zero this has index one and this has index two okay so therefore in here we have to put index two which makes it the third element in the list okay if i'm gonna run this okay we have a bit of an error of course why because i haven't added the semicolon at the end all right now if we have a look at instruction number two it says use the get method to access the second to do element of Poirot's um, to do list and print the result we have to use system dot out dot print ln and inside here we have to access Poirot's to do list and we say dot to access the get method and let's see what we need to what index do we need to put inside of this get method we have to access the second element in his to-do list the second element is one two so this is the second element but we know that the index is the index starts at zero therefore we have this is the element at index zero and this is the element at index one this is index one therefore okay so the second element in the list has index one and we can now uh, see printed on the screen so we can see the output and we don't have any errors therefore we can move on to the next lesson now changing a value when we were using arrays, we would rewrite entries by using bracket notation to reassign values. Okay, so attention here because we're using it. So now we're talking about arrays, not array lists. Okay, this is what we've seen in the previous lesson. So in their example, we have a variable that is an array and this the elements that we're going to store inside of this variable are going to be of type string and we have one two three elements inside of this um, array their indexes is going to be zero one and two now in order to reassign a value okay to one of the indexes we would use the name of the variable and then in square brackets we would put the index of the value that we want to swap okay so we say here on this line it says at index zero regardless of what i had before in there at index zero put this new value okay and now if we were to print the 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 values or the elements that our um, that the shopping cart variable would store we would have this variable okay which is gonna be at index zero and then followed by all the others because the others have not been changed now if we want to talk about array lists instead it says array lists has a slightly different way of doing this using the set method okay so if on arrays we're using the name of the variable and then followed by the square brackets with uh, the index inside then if we're talking about array lists we have to use the set method okay and in their example we have a variable that is an array list an array list and the type of the elements that this variable is going to store are, is going to be of type string and we're using the new keyword array list shopping cart and of course i think again this is a, a an error here because from the previous lesson we've seen that this here in, in the in the square uh, brackets in the in the angle brackets we have to use the type of the variable that this um that this uh, the type of the elements that this variable is going to hold in our case it should be string okay okay um and 
of course it is confirmed here if you have a look here how we're actually declaring okay it says array list and then we give it the string okay the, the, then in, in these angle brackets we have to use the type of the elements that we're going to store inside of this variable so this is anyways this is a very small um, I guess um, error that the people from Code Academy have done but since we're not running this code and whatever we're running here is completely fine then I guess we don't have to be picky on this but this is just a, it's just a like a, a note on this that this is wrong Okay, moving forward, on the next line we're saying shopping cart, add to my shopping cart um, this element. And then on the next line, add to my shopping cart this element. And then again on the same line. So at this point, we're having three elements inside of this variable. That is an array list, okay. And of course, their, um, their indexes are going to be 0, 1 and 2. And now it says shopping cart set. So we're using the set method. Okay. So it says at index zero, add this variable. Okay. Add this value. If we were to now print, so after this line, if we were to print the contents of this um, variable or the elements of this variable, we would have instead of trench coat we would had uh, we would have a tweed cape because we said on this line well inside my variable i know it had we initially added these elements but now i want to set at index 0 this value okay therefore if we were to print the elements of this variable we would have tweed cape and the rest of the these two variables or these two values that have not changed okay if we have a look at the instructions it says modify sherlock's to do so that the value at play violin becomes listen to dr watson for amusement okay so let's have a look at um what we need to do so modify sherlock's to do list so that the value at play violin, which is value at is the second value, therefore it's index zero one. Okay, so play play violin is the second element, therefore its index is gonna be one. So this one we have to set it to become something else. Okay. In our case, we have to put some uh, code here which is we're gonna have a look here for example so for a uh, Sherlock's to-do list okay we want to use the dot set method okay I'm gonna end it with a semicolon and inside here it says the value play violin which we have determined that is the value at um, index one we want to set it to this value okay and we're gonna do it like so so go to sherlock's to-do list okay well sherlock's to-do is the name of the variable access the set method on this variable okay and go to index one and whatever it had at index one which in our case is this one replace it with this new value okay let's run this Okay, we've completed instruction number one. And then if we have a look at the instruction number two, it says modify Poirot's to do's so that the value at trim mustache becomes listen to so and so. Okay, let's have a look at the Poirot's to do. Okay, and we have to identify the trim mustache um, element. So we have one, two, three fourth element is the element that we want to access so if this the uh, if this is the fourth element then its index is three so zero one two three so this is uh, located at index three we can go here and then access the set method on this um, element on this variable and we say at index three 
please replace it with this new value. Okay. All right. If I'm going to run this, we've completed instruction number two as well, and we can move on. Now, removing an item. So we're going to see how to remove an item. What if we wanted to get rid of an entry altogether? For arrays, we would have to make a completely new array without the value. Luckily, array list or array lists allow us to remove an item by, by specifying the index we want to remove. So in this example, we have a variable shopping cart, which is an array list. And the type of the element that this array list is going to store is going to be of type string. We're using the new keyword. We put the array list keyword as well and the type of the elements, which is going to be string and followed by parentheses and then um, a semicolon at the end. On the next three lines, we're saying in our variable, add this element in our variable, add this element in our variable, add this element, which makes it three elements in total. Okay. Now on this line, it says on our, in our variable, go to index number one and just remove it. Okay. In our case, index number one would be the value, this value. Okay. So this would be index zero. This would be index one. This would be index two. Now it says remove the value of the element that is located at index one. In our case, it would be this one. Once we run this line of code, our shopping cart will only have two elements. So because we've removed this one, we would be left only with two elements. Okay. We can also remove an item by specifying the value to remove. So instead of specifying the index that we want to remove, we can specify the value we want to remove. Okay. By using the same method called remove. Okay. So on this line, we have exactly what we've seen before. So we are creating an, a, um, an array list that is going to store the elements of type string and the name of the variable that are going to store these elements is shopping cart. And then on these next three lines, we are adding three elements, one here, one here, and one here. And then on this line, it shows, it says on the shopping cart, please remove the element that has this value and our code will go and we'll check which is this value will identify at which index this value is and it will simply remove it. Okay. This command, so we, th there's a note here and it says this command removes the first instance of the value trench code. I guess this, this refers to the fact that we might have repeating values. Say, so say we would have trench code here, this one, this one, and on the next line, we would have again, add trench code in our case. Well, in this case, we would have twice the, this value. So trench code will, will be at the beginning and then trench code will be at the end as well. And this note refers to the fact that by, by calling the remove method with a value, yeah, as an argument with a value that we want to remove as an argument, it will only remove the first instance of whatever value we're going to give it. So if we were to have in total four elements starting with trench code and ending with trench code, if we were to run the remove method on our variable, it will remove just this first instance of whatever value we want to remove. Okay. So it will not remove both of them if we were to have this value at the beginning and at the end. Now, if we have a look at the instructions, it says Sherlock Holmes and Hercules Poirot have each already visited their respective crime scenes. Remove visit the crime scene from Sherlock's to do's and Poirot's to do's using the remove method. Okay. So 
what we need to do is we have to go in the variable that stores the elements and we do this um, on uh, on Sherlock's Poro to-do list first and we say remove we end it with a semicolon and instead of using the um, I guess the the um, the index which we could have done let's use this one so visiting or visit the crime scene okay visit the crime scene and it will remove this one so the very first element okay we could have done the same thing by using index okay so the index of the value that we want but we're not going to do this we're simply going to use the value the actual value so not the index of that value okay we have to use the we have to do the same thing on uh, for us to do and we say remove we end it with a semicolon and oops we have to copy the same value because it's the same value that we want to remove from both to do's lists okay of both uh, characters moreover sherlock holmes has also gotten some violin playing done so you can remove play violin from sherlock's to do's as well so if we go on to sherlock's okay we can copy it again and we know that from him we also need to remove the to-do list with the uh, name or with a value actually play violin so i'm gonna copy this value i'm gonna paste it here okay let's try and run this code fine we don't have any um, errors and we can move on to the next lesson okay we are going to talk about getting an items index okay what if we had a really large list and we wanted to know the position of a certain element in it so for instance what if we had an array list called detectives with the name of fictional detectives in chronological order and we wanted to know what position for example someone called Fletcher was okay so we would have um, a uh, an array list called detectives that holds all these values okay so one two three four five six seven so we will have seven elements in total okay and if we want to know what position a certain value is at so what index a certain value is at we will have to use the name of the variable that holds those items and then call the method index of and then as an argument to the uh, uh, to this uh, method we would pass it the value that we want to find well we would pass it the value whose uh, index we want to find this code so this code would print four since fletcher is at index four of the detectives array list okay so let's check this out we have element so we're looking for the value fletcher okay which is here so this element would be at index zero this would be at index one this would be at index two this will be at index three this will be at index four so therefore if we are wanting to find out what index this value is of course we would get four okay so if we are going to have a look at the instructions it says after visiting the crime scene the ever impatient dr watson wants to know how many to do's are left until sherlock solves the case to help Dr. Watson figure out, uh, figure this out, use the index of to determine where in the to-do list the value solve case is. Print this information out. That's the number. That's the number of to-dos remaining before Sherlock's reaches solve the case. 
Okay, so let's read this once more. We have to use the index of to determine where in the to-do list we have this value, okay? So we need to get the uh, Sherlock's to-dos, okay? So let's actually copy this uh, variable. And we have to, so to help Dr. Watson figure out, figure this out, use the, uh, use the index of to determine where, and we have to print this information out. Okay. So we have to use index of, okay. We're going to end it with a semicolon and we're going to put the value that they're asking us, which is solve case. So we gotta find out this. Um, we gotta find out the 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 index of this solve case task. Okay. So to figure this out, use the index of to do to determine where in the to do list solve case is. Okay. So we have to print this information out, which is system dot dot Let's add another parenthesis here. That's the number of the to do's remaining before Sherlock reaches solve case. OK, so let's run this and see what happens. So we're getting three. Print the answer here. OK. We are getting three. Well, because we know that there's three more, um, I guess, three more uh, tasks that need to be completed before it reaches to the um, solve case uh, task. And let's have a look why three, because initially you would think, well, it might be four because we have one, two, three, four tasks before it reaches solve case. But let's have a look at the code. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six tasks in total. OK, and we can clearly see that before the solve case task, we have four more in, in front of it. OK, before it, before it would reach to the solve case. However, if we have a look at line 17, it says remove, visit the crime scene. So think that we don't have this one anymore. Therefore, we would have one, two, three tasks before it would reach to the solve case. OK, that's why we're getting three, because this is the number of tasks that Sherlock has before it reaches to the solve case value. OK, this first uh, value visit the crime scene was removed here on line 17. OK. We can move on to the next lesson and we've reached the review uh, section of, uh, of this, this whole uh, chapter. OK, now we know the basics of the array lists, including how to create an array list, how to add an, uh, a new item using the dot add method how to access the size of an array list using the size method, how to find an, um, how to find an item by index using the get method, how to change the value of an array list by using the set method, how to remove an item with a specific value using the remove method, how to retrieve the index of an item with a specific value using index of method. Now, if only there were some ways to move through an array on array list or an array list item by item. All right, so let's have a look at the instructions. It says we've included a workspace for you to test out your newfound knowledge of arrays and array um, an array lists. 
Remember, to run your code, enter the following in the terminal. So we have to use this command here in the command prompt. Okay. Um, okay, let's run this, I guess. So to run your code, enter the following in the terminal. Java list even though I believe that we should actually compile this before we run it like this, but let's just run it and see what happens. Or let's press enter here. Um, and I've just done that. Nothing here. This is the um, end, I guess, the, of, the, of this lesson.